Hey everyone, it's Evangelist Dina here with your new Life in Christ Ministries. I hope you guys are having a great day out there. So I do have some Christian worldwide news I wanted to bring to you, some headlines, some updates as to what is happening with Russia, North Korea, South Korea, the United States, NATO. A lot has occurred in the last few days. I haven't been able to do a video, but I have been checking the news and there are a lot of headlines I want to bring to you, specifically with the prophecy wars and rumors of wars now i don't like to talk about war it's not something that i like to do but it is prophecy and there is a lot of activity right now that's taking place so i want to bring these headlines to you so that you guys are aware of what is happening so we're going to take a look at that we're also going to look at this new law that uh, president putin signed in to effect just last week. Now I had brought you a report concerning that and at that point we didn't know if he was going to sign the law. Well he did and I have further details in regards to that. So we're going to go over that and then also we're going to do um, just a quick look at some other prophetic events that have occurred in the United States and also in the world. So let's get started. Here's a report from Yahoo News and it shows a map illustrating the mounting tensions between NATO and Russia. It goes on to say, with the continuation of hostilities in Ukraine and the U.S. and Russia backing opposite sides in the Syrian civil war, relations between Moscow and NATO has continued to sink to some of the lowest levels since the end of the Cold War. This continuation of tensions has led to Russia and NATO to carry out significant military activities throughout Europe as both sides try to increase the pressure and show their military capabilities. The following map from the Institute for the Study for War shows how the tension across Europe is playing out. Following a NATO announcement in April that it would consider carrying out the deployment of battalions to Poland and Baltic states to reassure those members against Russian aggression, Moscow announced in May that it was heightening its military posture in Europe. And I brought you guys that report. It goes on to say... This change of posture was reflected by the placement of three new divisions in the western and southern military districts along the borders of Europe. Additionally, Russia carried out a series of high-profile military moves aimed at NATO. Here are some other headlines in regards to Russia. Warsaw sounds the war drums, eyeing Russia in run-up to NATO summit. NATO seeks to build new wall across Europe to isolate Russia. Russian spy ships appears off Hawaii during military drills for 26 countries. The United States and NATO are preparing for a war with Russia. This comes from the Russian Insider. I'm not going to read the entire article to you, but I am going to read portions of it. It goes on to say, Massive military exercises and a troop buildup on NATO's eastern flank reflects a dangerous new strategy of stocking tensions. For the first time in a quarter century, the prospect of war, real war, war between the major powers will be on the agenda of Western leaders when they meet at the NATO summit in Warsaw. They just met on July 8th and 9th. Dominating the agenda in Warsaw will be discussion of plans to reinforce NATO's eastern flank, the arc of former Soviet partners stretching from the Baltic states to the Black Sea that are now allied with the West but fear military assault by Moscow. Until recently, the prospect of such an attack was given little credence in strategic circles, but now many in NATO believe a major war is possible and that robust defensive measures are required. In what is likely to be its most significant move, the Warsaw Summit is expected to give formal approval to a plan to deploy four multinational battalions along the eastern flank. Although not deemed sufficient to stop a determined Russian assault, the four battalions would act as a tripwire thrusting soldiers from numerous NATO countries into the line of fire and so ensuring a full-scale alliance-wide response. This, it is claimed, will deter Russia from undertaking such a move in the first place or ensure its defeat should it be foolhardy enough to start a war. The United States, of course, is deeply involved in these initiatives. Not only will it supply many of the troops of the four multinational battalions, but it is also taking many steps of its own to bolster NATO's eastern flank. Spending on the Pentagon's Eastern Reassurance Initiative will quadruple, climbing from $789 million in 2016 to $3.4 
billion in 2017. But it goes on to say, and there is the matter of self-fulfilling prophecies by announcing the return of great power competition and preparing for a war with Russia, the United States and NATO are setting in motion forces that could, in the end, achieve precisely that outcome. This is not to say that Moscow is guiltless regarding the troubled environment along the Eastern Front, but surely Vladimir Putin has reason to claim that the NATO initiatives pose a substantially heightened threat to Russian security and so justify a corresponding Russian buildup. Any such moves will, of course, invite yet additional NATO deployments, followed by complementary Russian moves, and so on, until we're right back in a Cold War-like situation. Finally, there is a risk of accident, miscalculation, and escalation. This arises with particular severity in the case of U.S. NATO exercises on the edge of Russian territory. In all such actions, there is a constant danger that one side or the other will overreact to a perceived threat and take steps leading to combat conceivable all-out war. When two Russian fighters flew within 30 feet of a U.S. destroyer sailing in the Baltic Sea this past April, Secretary of State John Kerry told CNN that under U.S. rules of engagement, the planes could have been shot down. Imagine where that could have led. Fortunately, the captain of the destroyer chose to exercise restraint and serious incident was averted. But as more U.S. and NATO forces are deployed on the edge of Russian territory and both sides engage in provocative military maneuvers, dangerous encounters of this sort are sure to increase in frequency and the risk of their ending badly will only grow. So that article goes into a lot more detail, and I'm going to leave the link for you guys in the comment section. But even Valador, President Valador Putin is warning of a World War III. Here are two more headlines from Press TV. NATO to deploy up to 4,000 troops to boost eastern flank against Russia. U.S. to deploy 1,000 more troops in Poland, says Obama. What is happening with North Korea? Here's a headline. North Korea calls U.S. sanctions over human rights declaration of war. North Korea on Thursday called new U.S. sanctions a declaration of war one day after the State Department for the first time named leader Kim Jong-un for human rights abuses. The reaction was announced by the Korean Central News Agency according to Reuters. It was at least the fourth time this year that the recluse nation which has nuclear weapons used such language after actions by the United States or South Korea. Here's another headline. North Korea threatens U.S. mainland with new missiles. North Korea has released a new propaganda video that threatens to destroy the United States with nuclear missiles currently under deployment. The bombistic video makes it clear that once the KN-14 ICBM is perfected, nothing, nothing will be safe from North Korean atomic reprisal. The video features numerous North Korean missile launches but highlights the KN-14 intercontinental ballistic missile. It's believed to have a range of up to 8,077 miles, enough to target New York or Washington. Washington, D.C. North Korea launches submarine missile just days after declaring war. North Korea has reportedly fired a submarine launched ballistic missile just days after dictator Kim Jong un declared war on the United States. A South Korean military spokesman said the missile was launched around 3 a.m. in the waters east of the Korean peninsula, but the military also believes that the missile likely failed in the early stages of its flight. Japanese Prime Minister said the launch was a clear challenge to U.N. resolutions, but he added that it would not affect Japan's national security. Here's a report from RT News. Joint decision U.S. to deploy missile defense to South Korea in face of growing North Korea threat. The U.S. will deploy a high-tech anti-ballistic missile system to South Korea as soon as possible now that the Allies have reached an agreement. The Advanced Air Defense Shield will beef up Seoul's arsenal amid growing nuclear missile threats from the North. And in response, North Korea has threatened a powerful measures over U.S. missile system deployment. North Korea vowed Monday to make a physical response after the U.S. and South Korea agreed to deploy the THAAD missile defense system to cope with Pyongyang's constant threats. Quote, there will be physical response measures from us as soon as a location and time that the invasionary tool for U.S. world supremacy 
bad will be brought into South Korea are confirmed, end of quote, says the North Korean military in a statement. It goes on to say, despite outcry from China, South Korean President Park said Monday that the advanced system wasn't intended to target any other country except the North. Quote, I'm certain the international community knows full well that we have no intention whatsoever to target any other country or threaten them. End of quote, says Park. China's foreign ministry swiftly criticized the move on Friday, stating that China expresses strong dissatisfaction and resolute objection to this. It goes on to say, refrain from taking actions that complicate the region's situation and do not do things that harm China's strategic security interests. China said the missile defense system deployment would not help bring about denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula and isn't conducive to peace in the region. The ministry said the move would seriously damage the security interests and strategic balance of the region. Let's not forget Israel. Here's a report from the Huffington Post that says, is Israel preparing for war against Hezbollah? And what is Iran up to? This report says Iran could be targeting America's electrical grid with an AMP weapon. So let's take a look at this new law that President Putin signed into effect. 7,000 churches are fasting and praying over this terrifying new persecution law. Russian President Vladimir Putin signed an anti-terrorism law, but for the country's many churches, the signature sparked a demand for prayer and fasting. The bill toughens punishment for acts deemed to be terrorism and for the organization of mass unrest, according to the Los Angeles Times. It would also introduce prison sentences of up to a year for those who fail to report such crimes. So what are the details of this anti-terrorism law that President Putin signed? Number one, foreign guests are not permitted to speak in churches unless they have a work permit from Russian authorities. If a friend or a relative from outside Russia wishes to share his or her faith in their home, the guest will be fined and expelled from Russia. Any discussion of God with non-believers is considered missionary activity and will be punishable. Missionary activity will be permitted by special government permission. For example, if one traveling on a train shares his faith without written permission, the offender will be taken into police custody for the duration of the journey and will be fined 50,000 rubles or $1,000. Offenders from the age of 14 will be subject to prosecution. Religious activity is no longer permitted in private homes. Most churches in Russia meet in homes. Every citizen is obligated to report religious activity of neighbors to the authorities. Failure to be an informant is punishable by law. One may pray, read the Bible at home, but not in the presence of a non-believing person. You will be breaking the law and will be punished. If the church has purchased property, it cannot be converted into a place of worship. In church buildings, it is not permitted to invite people to turn to God. Worship services are permitted, but making a non-believer a follower of Christ is against the law. In response, thousands of churches across the country have come together to cry out to God. The church is appalled at the news of the new law. About 7,000 evangelical Protestant churches are in fasting and prayer at the moment over the news. It goes on further to say Russia is closing down in an awful way. The new law is in total conflict with the purpose and the task given to the church by the Lord. The law will send the church back into Soviet era communist persecution. So very interesting that he signed this law into effect, but we have to remember that he is fulfilling Bible prophecy. So we shouldn't be shocked, especially with all the other signs and events that are happening right now in the world. This is expected. The question is how many other countries are going to follow in his footsteps and when will the United States signing a law similar to this. It will happen eventually because the Bible tells us that it will happen, but very, very interesting. So let's move on to some other events that have occurred. A lot has occurred, a lot of unrest here in the United States. So um, I put together another clip for you guys. So check this out and I will be right back.
So those are all of your Christian worldwide news. I wanted to bring you guys a quick update. Please come and visit me on Facebook where I have these stories and many more. Also on my ministry website at www.yournewlifeinchrist.com. And if there is anybody out there that would like to know more about Jesus Christ, please shoot me an email at yournewlifeinchrist at gmail.com. I would be honored to hear from you and answer any questions that you might have. All right, you guys, I love you. Jesus Christ loves you. Stay hidden in Christ in Jesus name. And I will talk to you soon. God bless.